Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be uh, analyzing uh, an infinite sum and pro and possibly solving it, so finding the the value of it if it converges that is. So let's get to it. So we have to check whether this thing converges. N goes from say one to infinity of minus one raised to n times the ln of n all over n squared. We have to check whether this thing converges. So let's check for absolute convergence first. So we have to check whether the absolute value of this thing converges. So n goes from one to infinity of minus one raised to n times the ln of n over n squared. Um, yeah, so the minus 1 raised to n, the alternating part, we can get rid of that. So we just have sum from n equals 1 to infinity of uh, ln of n over n squared. And to check whether this thing uh, converges or diverges, um, let's let's try to do, uh, uh, um, I think we can, we can try to do like a, ra a ratio test. So yeah, the limit is n goes to infinity of n plus one term. So ln of n plus one over n plus one, the whole thing squared multiplied by the reciprocal of the n term. So n squared over ln of n. And uh, we can divide by n squared over in this and that. So we have ln of n plus 1 over ln of n times 1 over, we have 1 plus 1 over n, the whole thing squared. And as n goes to infinity, um, this term, uh, yeah, this, this inside term is definitely uh, going to 0. So only we only have like a 1 left over here. Limit as n goes to infinity of ln of n plus 1 over ln of n. We can totally use a L'Hopital rule because it's like an infinity over infinity situation. So we have limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 over 1 over n. And then since like all the leading coefficients are 1, this thing will just go to 1. We only have a 1. So the ratio test is uh, inconclusive. Well, what can we do now? I mean, looking at this, most of our tests are failing, right? Let Let's try to do uh, an integral test. It's the best kind of test you can possibly do on this. So, evaluating the integral from one to infinity of ln of n over n squared dn. I would like to introduce a substitution where t is equal to ln of n, dt is dn over n, which means dt, so uh, yeah, sorry, dn is equal to e raised to t uh, dt. Let's call this i. i now becomes uh, t e raised to t dt. n squared is just e raised to t the whole thing squared, so e raised to 2t. And now plugging in uh, n equals 1, we have a 0. Plugging in n equals infinity, we have an infinity. So, one we can cancel one of the t's out. Finally, we have integral from 0 to infinity of t times e raised to negative t dt. We can only use by parts now. So, we have minus t e raised to minus t plus integral from 0 to infinity of uh, e raised to uh, minus t dt. Yeah. So it's minus t e raised to minus t uh, minus uh, e raised to minus t. Everything is evaluated from uh, 0 to infinity. So plugging in 0, there will be a tug of war. But since e raised to t is like a stronger term, for infinity, everything will become 0. So 0 minus, then this thing is 0 for 0 because of the t. And this thing is 1, so negative 1. So 
this thing is one the integral converges so does the so does the sum it absolutely converges so which means you don't need to waste your time doing the performing the alternating series test you can just directly jump in to find the sum of this thing so i'm writing the series again n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 raised to n times the ln of n over n squared now looking at the denominator you might feel like it's some kind of a, a p series hope you remember what a p series is so of the form n raised to p 1 over n raised to p and p has to be greater than 1 for it to converge now way i like to think about this is a p series is what we call in uh, number theory at least the riemann zeta function yeah, it's a fancy symbol i know <laughs> so as i said uh, riemann zeta function gives uh, you know one convergent value for p greater than 1 but the only problem here now is that there's like in this alternating sign so we don't use the riemann zeta function here directly we use its cousin the Dirichlet eta function so the way we define it is n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 raised to n minus 1 over n to the pth power so you know we have like this alternating sign now but the only problem is how do we introduce this natural law in the numerator so for that we could try differentiating the Riemann zeta of p uh, sum from 1 to infinity of d over dp I can take the derivative inside because you know, derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivative of each term so n raised to minus p so this evaluates finally to n goes from 1 to infinity of minus because of this negative p natural log of n over n to the pth power okay so yeah let's do the same with the Dirichlet eta now Dirichlet eta prime of p is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n minus 1 power d over dp of n to the negative p so we have n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 power and we have a minus 1 like before times the natural log of n all over n to the pth power now we can multiply n minus uh, minus 1 raised to n minus 1 with this minus 1 getting rid of the minus 1 in the exponent so we only have n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 raised to n times the ln of n all over n to the sorry supposed to be in the exponent yeah, all over n to the p power which is exactly our question so yeah we, we actually have like a formal function that is you know defining our question now and that is great because you can find values of this in in your uh, in, in mathematical literature but we just need to replace p with 2 and then we have our question actually so Dirichlet eta prime of 2 is basically our, our question right minus 1 raised to n ln of n over n squared right yeah so but the way I like to do it is you know because uh, I, I feel the Riemann zeta function is way more uh, understood by mathematicians so let's convert our Dirichlet eta into our Riemann zeta so there's a formula for that so say you have the Riemann uh, so the Dirichlet eta of x that equals 1 minus 2 raised to 1 minus x times the Riemann zeta of x and we want to take the derivative right so we have to differentiate both sides with respect to x so yeah then we have Riemann zeta of x times the derivative of this inside part which is 2 raised to 1 minus x times the natural log of 2 plus 
I, I won't differentiate this part, but I'll differentiate the Riemann zeta. So 1 minus 2 raised to 1 minus x in a bracket times uh, the, the Riemann zeta prime of x. So that's basically uh, what we want to find out. And let's plug in uh, the value 2 for x. So we have a uh, Riemann zeta of 2 times uh, uh, 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. So we have ln of 2 times uh, 2 by 2. And uh, 1 minus half is not, nothing but half 2. We have uh, uh, Riemann zeta prime of 2 all over uh, half. Yeah. Well, we know we know the value of this thing, right? It's it's just the infinite series. Uh, this is nothing but infinite uh, sum from n goes to 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, right? That by Euler is pi squared over 6. You can just directly plug that in. So pi squared times the natural log of 2 all over 2 and this is 2 into 6 plus uh, uh, Riemann zeta prime of 2 all over 2. Well, uh, here we can totally, you know, this could be an acceptable answer, but since, uh, you know, we want to make like a good approximation for our, uh, our Riemann zeta function, uh, good approximation of the derivative of the Riemann zeta function. Let's uh, write this in a better way. So, pi squared ln of 2 over 12 and uh, Finally, there is a value for uh, Z Riemann zeta prime of 2 that is Euler Mascheroni constant plus ln of 2 minus 12 ln of a plus ln of pi. Yes, it's like a crazy term. So, let me elaborate. So, your Euler Mascheroni constant is basically, I, I hope you know this, uh, it's kind of like the limiting value of uh, uh, your harmonic series minus uh, the natural law of n. And then this, uh, this A is what we call the Gleischer Kinkeling constant. And this you know is, is, is a pretty interesting constant in number theory. It's like has a big definition and I'm not gonna waste time writing that definition, but I hope uh, you understood this. So th this is basically the final answer to our question. Uh, n goes from one to infinity minus 1 to the n ln of n over n square. Yeah, that's the answer part. So, I hope you like this video. Please uh, like, share and subscribe. Have a great day. Stay indoors. Because it's COVID-19 land. <laughs> Peace out.